Welcome everyone to tonight's asset protection webinar. We are excited to have you here. If you're brand new for the very first time, this has been going on for, I don't know, close to 15 years we've been teaching this webinar series. And we've got such a plethora of, of recordings over the years. Um, we've got, we, we've got uh, just in the last few months, you've had Rob and Nicole Fuller, talking about debt versus equity, and you've had Derek Long, and we've had Steve, um, Randy Skeen, Steve Sumption. We've had some incredible people. Um, it's been uh, several months ago, we had Kevin O'Leary on. All of these webinars are recorded, and they're available on our YouTube channel for at least 30 days. Sometimes we rotate them in and out of the YouTube channel, but you can, you can bet they'll, they'll be there for at least 30 days. And after that, the recordings, you know, we just shift things around a little bit and, and keep them going. We do have a three-day Asset Protection Summit coming up. Um, it's right after tax day. So it would be tax day, you remember, is April 18th. They shifted it back from the 15th, which is on Saturday. They missed Monday. And so it's on Tuesday, the 18th. And right at, the week after that it would be April 24th, we'll be holding a three-day summit. And so if you're not registered for that, you can do that at protectwealth.com. Um, and, and if you would like to get access to any of the recordings, we kind of encourage you to go to protectwealth.com on our um, YouTube channel. So YouTube and then Protect Wealth Academy. And that's all you'd have to do is hit subscribe um, and, and you'll have access to all everything that we've got there. So look forward to that. And then as always, there is, we cannot give tax and legal advice. We can't give investment advice. Um, we, we can teach principles that are solid, that are timely. But after that, we're, we can't, and Stacy can't give the, you know, tech, technical advice, yes, investment advice, you, you invest in this and you'll win every time. No, we, we, we're just here to teach solid principles, and I hope you understand that. And, and with that, um, Stacy, you, you've been doing this. You, you started out, as I recall, uh, as a broker years ago in the Hollywood area, dealing with some very wealthy clients. And you've been in this market trading for years now. Um, I don't know anybody that, that can teach with, the, the, it, it's just delightful to have you here. Um, but with your experience in the market and, and you're trading, I don't know how many millions of dollars of accounts you're, you're trading actively now. So, so delighted to have you here. Maybe you can tell us a little of your background and how you got started in this and why. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm Stacy Acevedo. I have uh, I was previously a stockbroker in Beverly Hills, like uh, Don had mentioned, and that's where I realized that being in the financial business it's such a great business because if you ever really want cash, you go to the market. You can go to work or you can go to the market. And so we kind of really focused on getting really good at the market. But as a broker, we only I was only allowed to sell the mutual funds that they offer that they told me to sell and so I didn't really have a lot of choices and and I realized that you know the brokerage firms made so much money on everything that I thought gosh it doesn't seem right that these average people that are investing money and that the brokerage firms are, are sometimes making more money than them so as a broker I uh, started talking to my brother Mike and he was working at a grocery store at the time and long story short we both started trading um, options and trading actively in the market, taking our own control away from the big money managers out there. And so we decided to um, just kind of start trading and using our own technical analysis. And Mike developed his website and we've been doing this for, gosh, since 19, late 90s, I think just been trading and using our own technical analysis and teaching the average person out there how they can really get a hold of their finances and start taking control of that. And you know, helping get to the amount they need and enjoy retirement. 
So we have a lot to cover tonight, but um, I'm not sure how much you want me to talk about me. I'm, pr I'm pretty boring, but I got some. No, good stuff no, 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 no. <laughs> See, you know what? Thank you for that. Um, so um, do you want to take questions as you go through or do you want to hold those to the end or what would you like to do on this? You know, um, once I start talking, I might just continue on for a bit. So they can type in questions, but if I don't see them, then just do it at the end. It might be a little bit easier. And um, But if there's something urgent, I mean, I can see on the question and answer, I can see some of the questions in there. But um, if it's really important, I would say to save it to the end, please. That'd be great. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. I'll be in the background if you need anything. Stacy. we're delighted to have you here. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Don. And I'm going to... Fantastic. You should all be seeing my screen. Is that correct, guys? And I just want to say, welcome, everybody. I'm excited to hear to talk about tonight the market, because the markets are pretty crazy right now, as you all know. We're going to talk a little bit about um, not just how to invest with stocks or with mutual funds or other types of vehicles out there. We're going to talk about how you can actually take control and be very specific with your investments out there for those of you who are trying to trade right now and actively manage your own dollars. Now, just before we get started, as Don talked about, we have disclaimers. There's, uh, we don't give any uh, financial advice. We are pure educators on these webinars like this. And we are gonna be talking about different styles of investing. And just to let you know, you shouldn't be investing with uh, money that you can't afford to lose. This is really designed for putting some money aside long-term, let that money grow. But we wanna show you how to get the most out of that. So just keep in mind, um, when we're starting to talk about trading here, if we show you some stocks or some investments here, it's just for educational purposes. There's no financial recommendations. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, from the beginning of life, you know, everyone, society tells us we, we you know, grow up from kids, we graduate, you go to school, you graduate either your high school or your specialized school, and then you get a job and you get married. And, you know, at that point, you start having kids and you're, you're kind of using your money, your job to pay for all your bills. The problem is, People don't start really putting money aside. So the average person starts to maybe put money aside when they get um, maybe get a job and they start putting money into retirement accounts. But most people don't actually think about investing for the future, especially when you're young, because they think, hey, I've got 20, 30, 40 years to handle that. So how do you start really investing? You open a brokerage account. And this really should be for anybody, really at any age. I am a firm believer of even children should have accounts open for them just so they can get exposed to how investing works and um, how to really start saving and how the market can actually increase your money for you, not having to work so hard for your money. So you, maybe you open a brokerage account, maybe you open up an IRA, which is fantastic, or even a Roth IRA, which is even, fan, even way better than a, a regular IRA. Maybe you have a broker, maybe you hire a financial uh, planner or someone to help you decide how to, where to put your funds. And unfortunately, most people don't know where to invest. I know when I first started at the, my brokerage firm investing from my 401k, they said, okay, Stacy, how did you want to invest your funds? And they give you a list of about 25 mutual funds. And I said, well, you know, gosh. And so they said, they said pretty much just pick one from each area. And that's what most people are told to do. In fact, most people typically don't buy mutual funds on their own. They're usually sold. If somebody is going to be investing, the average person says, aren't mutual funds great? You know, all my neighbors are all mutual funds. I think they're fantastic. And the reality is mutual funds are a really good way for an average person to start investing. But there's, um, but they're kind of old fashioned now. It's kind of like a, a rotary telephone compared to our cell phones. The mutual funds that were decided, that were designed back, you know, 10 but gosh, back in the probably 40s, 50s, when they started opening up mutual funds, then um, the unfortunate thing is they're not as good as different types of investments today. So we're going to kind of cover that. A lot of mutual funds out there, most people just put money in and just kind of let it go. And they track the market overall. You're kind of told to once a year, maybe rebalance your funds on mutual funds. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how do you actually pick an investment? Is a mutual fund your best choice out there? What might be your better choice? And um, like I said, mutual funds are typically something that is sold. When I was a broker, they gave me a list of all the mutual funds that I was allowed to sell, even if it weren't the best ones for my client. 
most people who sell mutual funds are forced to sell uh, a very specific group of funds, and they're not necessarily the best performing funds out there. They do tend to be either proprietary for the firm that they work for, or they tend to have very, very high fees. There's a lot of hidden fees inside there as well. So we're going to talk about some of the choices you have here. Also, um, while you're starting to invest money, when you're growing up and you say, okay, let's put a small amount aside into the market, use your job to pay your current bills, but you want to start putting a small amount aside. Maybe if it's just when you're young, maybe if it's a hundred bucks a month or you know something like that. Maybe when you get old, you put in a few thousand dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month. So you can start saving money. So as you add your, it's called dollar cost averaging. You open up an account, you choose your investments, and then you start investing. You know, you start adding dollars to it month by month. The best way to do this is through a company retirement plan, which would be a 401k or retirement plan, uh, IRA, some, something like that. They automatically take money out of your accounts. That's probably the best way that people start saving for retirement. And this is really important because when we go to work and we pay all of our bills and we go through life, we rarely spend how much time focusing on how much we're going to save for retirement. And we spend typically about one third of our life in retirement. And that's why we say you really have to start, you know, being a very proactive, uh, engaged investor when it comes to your retirement, even if you want to do passive investing, but still be aware of what your choices are out there. And just as technology has changed, there's a lot of really good choices out there that we're going to show you tonight. So mutual funds should grow if you start adding money in each month or maybe every quarter start adding money into your investments. Um, the fund manager and the brokerage firms make a lot of money off of your funds when you add money into mutual funds. There's a lot of hidden fees inside of there. In fact, when you invest into a mutual fund, you put your money into a company. You don't actually put your money into a stock market. You put your money into a very specific company. They take your funds and they'll go out there and they'll buy a different stocks or bonds, whatever they want. Now, when you buy or sell, you're actually going directly to that company to get your money back. Sometimes that company can actually say, you know what, this is not a good time to pull your money out and they can put a freeze on your account. So they're somewhat limiting. Now, it's not going to happen probably to you. But then we didn't think that banks would go under either. One of the largest banks in the, you know, the second largest bank in history just recently went under. So I want you to be very uh, specific and, you know, know where your money's at and know how to access your money. So with mutual funds, mutual fund money managers, they actually uh, will take your money out and they'll be buying bonds and stocks and things like that. And they'll hedge and they make so much money. And then they take a small portion and they, pay out that out to you. They pay their profits. They pay their bonuses. They pay a lot of different um, things from these mutual fund profits. Brokerage, front, brokerage company loans your money out and they use it to, um, they use your account value. A lot of times if you have stocks, brokerage firms can go in there and they can borrow your stocks. And you are paying the whole time. You're paying to have this mutual fund and have them use your money, really. And it's not getting you the best returns out there. And this is honestly just the way the business is. It's just, this is how the business works. Most people don't really know this. They just say, hey, here's a mutual fund. I don't know how to invest. I guess I should put it into that. Well, there's one thing I wanted to show you. This just came out. Um, it said, a lot of times mutual funds, they will have um, capital gains. Here's an example. Last year, the stock market was pretty bad. The S&P was down about 20%, a 20% drop in value last year. And in this example, it shows that mutual funds, <clears throat> they have, what um, says, worse than watching a mutual fund investment decline in value is getting hit with a big tax bill. The reality that some Americans are facing this year as the deadline to file taxes approaches is largely a function of how actively managed mutual funds operate Portfolio managers buy and sell securities in the fund to reposition their strategies, as many did so in 2022. The problem is, after a long bull market, many stocks in the mutual funds have increased in value, and they were purchased years ago. So in 2022, they were trying to actively manage a portfolio, so they were selling some stocks they had purchased years ago. So because of that gain, they're going to pass on the taxable gain to you, even though your actual fund is down roughly about 19%. So 
So with mutual funds, there's a lot of tax issues and that most people aren't aware of as well. So it says the double whammy is um, taxable gains distributions are never pleasant, but in 2022, they felt like salt in the wound because you're having a, about a 20% loss in your portfolio, plus you're paying taxes on all of that. And with mutual funds also, and we're, we're, we're focusing on mutual funds tonight because that's what the majority of people have. And with their retirement plans, they're usually in mutual funds, but we're here to show you that there's probably some better choices out there for you. This came from Morningstar. This is the most recent data as of 1222. It says the five-year annualized returns on um, mutual funds on all U.S. equity funds for the past for a five-year return is about 7.10%, 7 7.1% roughly. So again, that's a five-year return between the good years and the bad years. Now, had you invested just in the market itself, just in the entire Standard & Poor's 500 top, top, top stocks out there, your return would have been 9.42%. That's an average five-year annualized return. Again, good years, bad years, even though last year was a bad year, the year before and the year before was very good. So you're averaging 9%. So what it's showing is with mutual funds, you're paying a lot. You're having tax consequences uh, when you're not actually getting the profits out of that. And you're actually paying for underperformance overall. And these are returns from Morningstar. They are taking a look at all the equity funds out there. In fact, take a look at international equity funds. A lot of people say the great place to be right now is international because sometimes right now the U.S. we're having uh, earnings are coming down. Uh, earnings, corporate earnings are really decreasing rapidly right now. We see a lot of companies coming out saying that their next quarter is not going to be as good. So we're wondering where do we put our money right now? How do we choose a specific stock? And the reality is you don't have to choose a, a specific stock. You can take your money and find a mutual fund-like investment which is be a big package of investments. And in the package, you have multiple different stocks or multiple different bonds. And that's very similar to a mutual fund and that's called an ETF, which is, which is an exchange traded fund. Now an exchange traded fund is very, very similar to mutual funds. They were actually born because, or created because people were in mutual funds, but they said, gosh, what the problem is, the customers aren't getting rich, the money managers and the brokers are getting rich with mutual funds because there's an entrance fee. There's a lot of times an exit fee. There's a quarterly fee. Uh, there's huge annual fees. There's, the fees are broken down on several different pages in the prospectus with mutual funds. So the problem is a lot of your great profits are going to pay the managers and all the big bonuses and everything else. So someone came up with something called an exchange traded fund like a mutual fund, but it trades on an exchange. So you're, if you purchase an exchange traded fund, you don't actually put money into a specific mutual fund company. You actually put money directly into the market, the New York Stock Exchange, or whatever type of um, sector you select. And we'll show you these choices here in just a moment. But as you can see, uh, throughout the years, this is becoming more popular. Again, mutual funds were very popular because that's what most brokers sold all the time because there's, there's very, very nice fees involved to those poor people in the financial business. But the reality is the average person with the internet, they got smart and they said, hey, there's got to be a way that I can create a better return for myself than actually going out there and try to invest in mutual funds. So ETFs, as you can see throughout the years, it's becoming much more popular. There's a lot of articles that are written about it. And people who try to invest on their own many times will choose or select an ETF. In fact, in fact um, the past several years, we've seen a lot more money move into ETFs versus mutual funds. These are the people who say, gosh, I know there's a better way to invest. I don't want this mutual fund because it really... Um, it's not giving me the best return and I don't want the tax consequences. So I'm going to go into these ETFs. So I guess my point tonight is if you happen to have some mutual funds right now, there's probably some very similar exchange traded funds that you could potentially move over into and actually get a higher return potentially and create more control. You're actually going to understand what's in your portfolio. Because with mutual funds, we don't really know what's in your portfolio. 
they will buy and sell different stocks, but they don't actually tell you every single stock that's in there. So you don't really know what's what you're actually buying. Now, at the end of the quarter, you'll uh, find out they'll give you a, it's called window dressing. They'll give you the, a snapshot of like the top 10 holdings, but not all of the holdings. So in a sense, you're really putting your money into a company, not the stock market, and you really have no idea where it's going. It could be in companies that you don't necessarily care for. Whereas an ETF, which is similar, but really kind of better, these are very transparent. An exchange traded fund actually um, is the same different, same style of investments as far as package of investments. You're going to have a lot lower costs because you don't have a money manager actively buying and selling constantly, and they're not borrowing your cash out of your mutual fund and using it for other things. So with an exchange traded fund, it's your package of investments, but it's fully transparent. You know exactly what's in there at all times. You can see every security, whether it's a stock or a bond or anything that's in there, and it um, trades on the exchanges itself. So if you wanted to actually pick up the phone or actually go on your computer and buy this, you can hit buy that morning. Or maybe you see in the news something happened. Maybe there's a catastrophic event, which has been happening a bit in the past year or so. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a bear market right now. Maybe you see the market starting to drop and you want to get out. You can actually go in that moment directly with an ETF, the new way of investing, and you can trade and, and exit that morning or exit that evening if you're not comfortable. Whereas if you were in a mutual fund and you wanted to exit, you'd have to call the company and say, I'd like to withdraw my funds. And they'll say, oh, okay, if we happen to have liquidity available, we'll send them to you in the next couple of days. Um, or you, you, get, you get filled at the end of the business day, even if you call first thing in the morning. So many times it's just not as easy to access some of your dollars there. That's all. Now, transparency, of course, you want to know exactly what you're investing in, especially in today's market when we're seeing a lot of companies out there are, you know, with the crypto companies, you know, a lot of companies out there are getting to situations where they might be crossing the line when it comes to some rules and boundaries. And of course, uh, there's so many more choices available to you with uh, exchange traded funds versus mutual funds. So uh, BlackRock, one of the largest money managers out there, they manage, I think, gosh, $6 trillion. They even said that this is one of the best, fastest growing investment vehicles out there is uh, the ETFs. Larry Fink, he's saying that this is one of the best places for the, an average person if you really want to step up your investing uh, profile and really start making some smart choices and not just blindly putting your money into mutual funds. So similar to a mutual fund in the sense of you're very diversified, you put your $1 in, um, the, the nice part is you don't have to buy exact number of shares, whereas if you're going to buy a stock, you have to buy you know shares, one share, two share, whatever. With a mutual fund or ETF, you can put in small dollar amounts, which is great for someone who might be first starting out to start saving money, or maybe uh, someone who says, I'd like to just add on a monthly basis. Structured like a mutual fund, you put your money in and you're very diversified among all the different securities in there. And the great news is you have thousands of choices to select from. In fact, there are more mutual funds than stocks. The only thing that's in a mutual fund is a stock or a bond, and a money manager decides which ones to buy. Most people buy six different mutual funds. The reality is they're buying the exact same stocks in those six different mutual funds. And you don't really know that as much because they're, they're harder to identify what's really in them. With an ETF, you can put your money into different sectors out there. You can go into a, a small company, a small company, uh, the Russell, um, to get to more aggressive. Or you can be really conservative and go into something like the Dow Jones and just put your money into the Dow Jones or into the NASDAQ. I'm going to show you some of these choices just to kind of give you an idea of, hey, maybe I want some conservativeness here, but I want some aggressiveness over here as well. I want exposure to maybe emerging markets or whatever it is. So they're similar to investment groups, but the best thing about them is um, there are so many more choices with exchange traded funds than mutual funds. They uh, trade during market hours. Like I said, if you want to enter in first thing in the morning and because the market looks like it's really good, you can enter in at any point in time when the market's open. You don't have to wait until the actual end of the day. And um, 
So are there are there index ETFs and actively managed? Yes, there are. There are actually both. There are so many different types of ETFs. I'm going to show you some of them out there because there are thousands. Many companies like the Vanguards that you mentioned, and um, you know BlackRock. There are so many companies that actually have started their own ETFs because they realize that the average person is starting to kind of come away from mutual funds, but they still want to capture those dollars. So many companies that were mutual fund companies are now actually starting ETFs. They're not as profitable for these companies, but a good example would be Fidelity. Fidelity Vanguard, you know, they have mutual funds, but they now have ETFs because they still want to capture the majority of people's money out there, but they really um, don't want to, they don't want to lose the funds um, when someone's coming out of a mutual fund into an ETF. So no matter which ones you choose, whether it's a specific company or whether it's just the, the main ones out there that, that, that follow the indices as well, we'll talk about those. You really want to compare just the fees and the performance. And just if they have the same investment holdings, you want to make sure which one has the lowest overall management fee. There are some actively managed ETFs as well. Um, a lot. The nice part is you can place um, exit orders on, you can place stop loss orders. So when we look at a chart here in just a minute or two, I'm going to show you when the stock is, when the ETF or the market's coming down, 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 piece of bad news, you can have the computer automatically exit you out, move into cash and let the stock fall or let the index fall or the ETF fall. And then you're back in a safe spot, meaning you can put protections in place. If for some reason, when the market's heading up, you want to be in your investment, but when the market starts to change direction and it's no longer heading up and you're taking full risk, you want to make sure that you have a stop loss in place um, or you want to make sure that you can possibly, if you buy the stock or the ETF, you can actually start potentially writing covered calls on that and bringing in some monthly income off that as well. With a mutual fund, you can't place a stop loss because you're not investing in the stock market, you're investing in a company, not in the stock exchange. With the ETF, um, it trades just like a stock. So you have your, um, you can place all your limit orders on there. You get your dividends directly paid to you as well and trades during the market hours. This is the really sad part that most people don't understand when it comes to mutual funds. They, they say, oh, it only has a 1% fee. There are so many hidden fees inside. Um, this comes from Morningstar, which is an independent rating service. The average mutual fund total expense, total. Now, this is after operating costs, investment advisory fees, marketing, distribution, brokerage fees, custodial, transfer agency, legal, accounting fees, even the electricity. All these fees have to be paid from the mutual fund's profits. And this is why mutual fund money managers get billion, or excuse me, hundreds of millions of dollars in bonuses, huge, huge, huge bonuses. All that comes from the average total expense ratio of about 3% a year. Now you might be saying, gosh, my mutual fund doesn't have a 3% annual fee. Well, they're broken up. The fees are broken up to several different fees. You actually have to add them all together to actually see this. And that's really alarming. Thinking that the five-year return on a, you know, average five-year return on a mutual fund is 7%. And then if you're going to be paying fees on top of that, you're really not going to be um, ahead of the game here. The benefit of exchange-traded funds, there's thousands of choices. Now, there's about 28,000 mutual funds. There's about 2,800 mutual, uh, ETFs in here in the U.S. If you wanted to go worldwide, um, there's about 8,000 ETFs you can invest into worldwide as well. But the benefit here is your expense ratio is less than a half a percent. Now, you have to make your decisions on deciding which, which ETF you want, when do you en enter and when do you exit. But the nice part is, is really it's only you're paying a very, very small fee. One of the great things also with the markets right now, the way the markets are heading, we're not, because we, we've been in this bear market probably for the about for the past 15 months or so, 16 months, year, about a year and a half. So what we're seeing is um, our market is reactionary. Whenever there's a piece of news, our market flies up. So maybe you say, hey, I don't want to invest in the market right now, but I know that maybe gold or oil is going to do really well. You can actually invest into 
without choosing one company, like one gold company or one oil company, you can invest into a package or an investment, an ETF, an exchange traded fund of just gold, of just oil, just natural gas. It's a wonderful way for you to actually go out and put your money into a sector, but not choose just one company, put all your risk with one company. Here is a chart. Now, this is an older chart, but it just want to show you how it mirrors. This, the top chart is, um, this is the gold futures contract. And the bottom chart is the gold ETF. So you could invest in the actual futures, which fluctuate wildly, very, very high risk. Or you could just easily put money in, small dollar amount in, no matter what it is, and add each month. And you're getting pretty much a very similar type of return. But this would be specifically for gold. And we know right now gold is doing quite well because gold tends to do well when there's, um, how do I say it politely, but when there's uh, a lack of confidence in governments internationally and in the U.S., gold is doing quite well. So that's one of the areas that uh, we can take a look at investing into. Also, you can take a look at oil. Uh, sometimes when oil uh, goes up, I notice that when oil futures rise are really, really high, I always take a look at the chart and say, gosh, this is not the time to be filling up all my cars right now. Or what Mike likes to do, Mike likes to say, hey, I'm going to go ahead, if oil futures are high, I'm going to buy the ETF, it's called USO, of oil. It's a whole bunch of oil, different the oil stocks in here. And then once you own this, you can then write covered calls on a monthly or even weekly basis and start pulling in and some income to pay for your gas at home. So there's many ways you can do this, but what I'm trying to show you is when you're investing, you don't have to just blindly select. There's 25 mutual funds, select you know, eight of those. With an ETF, you can be much more strategic about this. You can select an investment based upon the actual criteria of what it's investing in. I'm gonna show you some choices that we have here. And there's, like I said, there's thousands of choices out there, but I wanna show you a really smart way on how to identify some of the better places for you if you're more aggressive or if you're more conservative. The tax benefit, um, the tax benefit of an ETF. Well, you might actually get, um, you might actually get a tax benefit of ETF because if you're investing in gold or collectibles, which they have very specific ones, they are, their current collectible tax rate is at a 28%, which could be less than your actual tax rate right now. Plus, Mutual funds will have those capital gains that you'll have to pay, like I showed in the last article. If the money managers have a stock they purchased you know, years ago and they just sold it, there's going to be a huge capital gain. They pass all of those on to the mutual fund holders. Whether you receive a gain in your actual share price or not, the fund received a capital gain. Therefore, you as the mutual fund holder have to pay that. That doesn't happen with ETFs, uh, with exchange-traded funds. Uh, you want to make sure also um, with an exchange traded fund, there's usually very little commissions. There might be a very small fee, but many of them have no fees whatsoever. Uh, there, you do have a, a bid and ask. You have the, buy, the buy and sell price, there might be a small difference in there, but you're not going to have the huge entrance fee of mutual funds. At one point, when I first started my career, the mutual funds, the maximum by law was eight and a half percent entrance fee just to get into the mutual fund. And then they slowly started reducing those quite a bit. Um, they're down to about four and a half percent roughly overall. So also you want to make sure that um, you have some liquidity here. Because ETFs trade directly on the exchange and you're not going into one stock, you're not putting all your risk into one company, you're taking your risk and you're spreading it out among all these different stocks in that particular uh, exchange traded fund, whether it invests into large companies or small companies or international companies or gold or oil or something along those lines. Also, um, even real estate. I'm going to show you some of the sectors. This is one of my favorite ways to invest into sectors. And I'll show you this here in just a second. So, oh, actually it's now. We're going to go to the website. And I'm going to go to our website. And we're going to click on, all right, we should be looking at my website right now. I, I believe that's where we're at. Is that correct, guys? Mike's are our website. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. And um, so what I'm going to first do is, this is the website. 
of Income Trader. Many of you possibly have been on this. This is the educational tool that Mike created, gosh, back in the 90s. And when we, I left my, my firm as a broker and Mike said, we got to learn how to invest correctly, not just letting the brokerage firms do it. So he created this, this uh, website and he's been growing it every year ever since then. But this is a fantastic way for an average person to say, hey, I don't know much about the market, but how can I possibly learn? And we made, he made this so visual that the average person can look at this and go, I can discern whether I should be in or whether I shouldn't be in this particular investment. So I'm at the, I'm at the main page of our website. I'm going to click on the scanner page. If I click on stock scanner, it's going to bring me to all these different choices to how do we find a particular stock. Because tonight we're talking about ETFs. I'm going to click on I'm going to go down to the ETF scanner. These are exchange traded funds. Mutual funds are, we can, you can look at your, your mutual funds. If you have the ticker symbol, it's five digits. You can look at that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the ETF scanner and go to some of the most popular ETFs. So just top part of the website under scanner. Now, if you're looking for a stock, we can select stocks, but we just clicked on ETFs. Now look at this. We can go to the popular ETFs. These are the largest ones that the average uh, person invests into, the big ones out there, the biggest. There's equity ETFs that are just stocks. These are large company stocks, small company stocks, medium company stocks, depending upon what you'd like to focus on. There's international equities and real estate. Um, this is real estate investment trusts have been in the news quite a bit. They happen to have um, a little bit higher fees. Um, a little bit higher fees overall. There's income. If you're looking for to generate a monthly income overall, there's bond funds and income funds overall. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the popular ETFs. And what this brings up is, this is going to show us, first thing it says, the indices. If you wanted to invest into just the standard course top 500 stocks, because you say, hey, these are the best of the best out there. I'm not sure what company to invest in. I just want to go into the entire market. Because if the entire market is averaging 9%, you know, for you know, overall, that's a pretty good return. And I don't have to pay huge fees. So this is the standard course 500. And the symbol for this is SPY. Now it says, is this optionable? Yes. I know this is not really an options uh, class right now, but once you learn how to write covered calls, you can actually write a, a, write a covered call once a month on your S&P stocks here, on your S&P ETF. And it says this actually pays a dividend of 1.58%. Now, if you actually click on this, it's going to show you this is what the market has been doing for the past, uh, for the past year. What's this? Kind of, here's where it was a, a year ago. <laughs> All right, so here's what our market's been doing overall. Do we really want to invest in this right now? Probably not because the market's been really uh, heading down quite a bit. So you can take a look. This is the, uh, here's the Dow Jones. Here's the NASDAQ 100. Now, maybe you said, okay, I'd like to take a look. I'd like to go into high technology. There's uh, my brother-in-law is a computer computer geek and he likes to invest in all the technology stocks. He doesn't want the, you know, the Dow stocks that are the old stodgy stocks. He wants the technology. So click on this. It's going to show you the NASDAQ. Again, performance, the market has been pretty poor overall. Here's the past year for the NASDAQ. That was down about, I think, um, 27, 30% last year, quite a bit. But what I do want to show you, and here's the Russell 2000. These, you can invest a certain portion of money into the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, which is the small company. Now look how poorly this has been doing. Gosh, here's most recently, February to March. Look what our markets have been doing. Here's a year ago. So when we see our highs are not getting any higher, they're actually getting lower. We're really in a downtrend overall. Now, let's say you said, Stacey, where do I even start? You know, if you're brand new to investing and you didn't really know where to start, you could actually put a portion of funds. You could put 20% uh, in the S&P 500. You could put 25% in the Dow Jones. You could put 25% in the NASDAQ. And you could put, you know, another 
20% into the Russell, and then the rest into the cash if you wanted to. If you just didn't really know where to put your funds, but you wanted to be spread out, these are the top stocks on the index out there. So it's a great way to diversify your assets. At this point, we're not going to go into this because if we look at the if we look at the current performance of this, we see the past year it's actually been heading down. We're still in this bear market, so it's not the best time to invest into the standard ETFs right now. But if you scroll down, you'll see something called inverse ETFs. Now, I really like these a lot because they're the exact opposite. So if our markets have been coming down for the past year, year and a half or so, roughly we've been in bear market. Now, bear markets are, it just means that we're not, uh, we keep getting lower, lower, lower. So here's an inverse. And what this says, this actually pays a 2% dividend. This is the S&P. So when the S&P goes down, this actually goes up in value. And this pays you a 2% dividend. So you're, paying, you're playing the opposite side of the market. Here's the Dow Jones inverse. It's called the dog. Let's take a look at this. Now, I just clicked on the Dow Jones. This is called the DOG. It's the pro shares, the Dow Jones inverse. Now, here's a six month or here's a standard three month chart. Oh, well, so here's a chart. Let me go to a three month chart here. Here's a three month chart. So here we see three months ago where the stock was kind of just go doing nothing, nothing, nothing in bear markets. We don't have much movement. And then all of a sudden we have a huge spike. This actually started to go up in value quite a bit. Now, again, this is the inverse. What that means is looks like about February, the end of February, the Dow Jones started to drop and this actually was going up in value. Now, if you're brand new to us and you haven't used our website before, is all you have to look at, if you are saying, Stacy, is this a good stock or not? Is all you have to look at is when you look at the stock's, the stock's current chart, here's the most recent day. What you want to ask yourself, is the stock's price above this blue line? If it is, you will have a green arrow, which means, yes, you should be in this investment. Now, if the stock's current price is below this 30-day moving average, you'll actually see a red arrow, and that means you shouldn't be in this investment right now. Now, this is meant for investors who are learning how to invest, and you just go, I don't want to look at this a lot. I just want to know if it's green, I'm in. If it's red, I'm out. That's all you have to really understand. So it's a, it's a really easy way to look at some different stocks out there. Now, here's the Dow Jones inverse. What's the Dow Jones, et cetera? Are they like mutual funds? Are they reporting agencies? Oh, this is the Dow Jones um, index itself. So this is the, the top 30 stocks. Now, this is the inverse of that. Here's the NASDAQ inverse. So when the NASDAQ has recently, just the past couple of weeks or so, has been moving up quite a bit. So this has actually been dropping. And here's the Russell inverse. Let's look at this one. Russell is a small company stock. Let me just click on the, let me go to the chart itself. Look at this. Oof. Now, this is the inverse of the Russell. So the Russell is, is the inverse. So what this is saying is, as you can see, prices were above, and then prices dropped back below. I hid the arrows. I'm going to unhide these arrows. When the prices drop below this blue line, you exit. You exit. You stay out. You stay out. You stay out. Prices go back above, you get back in, you're in, you're in, and you're still in. So when this is going up in value, that's telling you the Russell 2000 is coming down in value. My point to showing you all of these different ETFs, if you're brand new to investing, a really good place to be is stay with the major indices and just diversify a little bit. If you think the markets are dropping, then trade the inverse of the major indices if you're a conservative investor. Now, you can also go down and you can take a look at different sectors. You, see, you can say, hey, maybe we're, you know, obviously our, our economy, they changed the definition of a recession recently. So a recession is when the gross domestic product is negative two quarters in a row, then that's it, we're in recession. We have been negative two quarters in a row, but they're not calling it a recession. What, where do we invest? in times of recession. You want to go into more defensive stocks. Well, healthcare is going to be one of the places that um, people always, I live in Florida, 
So I, down here, there's a lot of retired people and the healthcare is a very big issue down here. So healthcare is going to be one of the places that probably will do well during a recession. Uh, we can take a look at here's autos. The, uh, you can trade, just focus on cars, basic materials, industrial products. You can invest into specifically construction or computer technology. Let's take a look at this one, computer technology. Now, this is part of the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the past six months. All right, let's go back to a three month, make it easier to see. So this is, a, this is an exchange traded fund of just technology. So this is saying, as opposed to going into just one stock, whether it's Facebook or whether it's um, Tesla or whether it's Microsoft or uh, you know any of those, this is a grouping of all these different stocks together, which is a very conservative way to invest into this. Now, someone had asked, what's an index? An index is, it's the top stocks out there. Um, the S&P 500 is the top 500 stocks in the US economy. The Dow Jones is the top 30 stocks that have been around for years and years that have a certain capital, capital size. I forgot what it is right now, but they're very, very large old stocks like AT&T. Um, you know, Microsoft is on there. Um, the NASDAQ is mostly meant for technology and the Russell is meant for small company stocks. It's a little bit more aggressive. Now, someone asked, what's an inverse ETF? An inverse ETF means it does the exact opposite. So if you say the entire market is going up, the inverse is going to go down. You don't want to be in that. If our entire market is going down, you might consider an inverse ETF because that will go up. Guys, an inverse is for someone who wants to be a bit more aggressive and trade when the markets are dropping. They still want to be able to make some money. Now, frankly, I think cash is a fantastic place to be when the markets are dropping, especially right now. You can get about 4% in cash. So cash isn't a bad place. But this is a great way if you said, hey, I would really like to structure my portfolio more specifically versus just going into a mutual fund. I want to go into maybe computer technology. Maybe I want to go into or oils or, or not finance right now. This is not the time to be into finance, as we can see. Or maybe utilities. Utilities tend to do very, very well. They're very boring, but they pay a dividend. It pays a 3% dividend. Let's take a look at this. Okay, well, utilities have come down because the market's in a bear market. But let's go to a one year on this. So here's a one year performance on utilities. Now, again, pretty sad looking chart because the market has been dropping. What you're seeing here with utilities, we're in a bear market. If we get into a recession, utilities tend to be the very safe place because everybody knows that a utility company is not going to go under. I probably shouldn't say that. Um, th light, things are changing very quickly in this world, it seems like. But util the major utility companies probably aren't going to be going under anytime soon because we're still going to pay our electric and our water bills. So they're going to pay a nice dividend of about 3%. But as we can see right here, you had a red arrow. It said you shouldn't be in this. Stay out, stay out, stay out, stay out, stay out. Finally, it said get back in. Uh, about... A week later, it says get back out. So at this point, we wouldn't be in this. But as you can see, it kind of came down and held this area down here. If we get into a recession and you're not sure where to put your money, cash is a great place. But also, you might consider looking at one of these sectors um, in the ETFs, you know, whether it's utilities, whether it's healthcare. Um, typically, in a recession, you don't want to go into something like retail because in a recession, People don't have, you don't have a lot of cash to be buying things. They got laid off, let's say, for example. Um, I have money mutual funds. It's way less than when I put it in there. So can't figure out what a dividend is. I would think, uh, what's a dividend? You put money to a mutual fund and you have a lot less than you have. Yes, our market has been in a bear market. We had a very bad year last year. The S&P was down 20, roughly 20%. NASDAQ was down about 20, 30%. So any money that you have put in there, the market's down. That's normal. Now, if you can take your money out of the mutual fund and go into um, an ETF, if you don't know what type of mutual fund you're in, then I would just say go into a major ETF on one of the major indices. Or if you said, hey, I think that gold might be a place, maybe you could 
put a small portion of your money into the gold ETF. We see how this is moving up in value. Or maybe silver. Silver is also um, being used quite a bit. I think is it for uh, silver is being used, I think, for solar. So gold and silver could be a great place. Or whether you want to look at different types of currencies out there. There's all different uh, types of ETFs. I just clicked on the most popular ones. If you're brand new to trading and you have money in a mutual fund, and yes, it's down quite a bit, then you might want to practice trading some of these inverse indexes. You understand these move? I'm trying to read some of these questions. So the question is, which ETF would you purchase, whether it's, um, whether it's this one or whether it's this one? You can take a look at both of them and see which one you prefer, actually. When it comes to this, um, maybe you want to put one into the easy. These ETFs have got so large, they've actually started to kind of, I don't want to say clone them, but they do. Vanguard has their own. Fidelity has their own. All these different mutual fund companies have their own S&P index as well. So if you choose to go with a mutual fund company or just choose to go with the major ETFs out there, it's your choice. Um, I'm taking a look at some of these different ones. Now, a couple of things I wanted to show you real quick is before I, I'll answer questions at the end as well. I'm on the stock scanner page. So scanner page, this is if you said, Stacy, I want to just invest into a, an individual stock. You can select a good stock, uh, an almost good stock. You can select, uh, here's the ETFs. You can select stocks that pay dividends. If you click on this, we'll pull up all the different stocks that pay fantastic dividends and we'll grade this for you. But as you scroll down the page, I wanted to show you this is the earnings per share. This has really been a problem the past year. Corporations have been having their earnings are beginning less and less and less, which is very frightening because stock prices, um, a lot of stock prices haven't actually come down as much. People are paying too much money for lower earnings. And this is why our market's been in its bear market for about a year and a half. Um, as companies are reporting more earnings and saying, gosh, we're not making as much as we did last year or as much as we did last quarter, as earnings are in decreasing, the stock's price should decrease as well because you're not going to be paying a high price for decreasing earnings or profits overall. So this is a fantastic thing I'd like to show you. It says the earnings per share growth this year and the earnings per share growth next year it shows you utilities. They don't grow as much, you know, 5% this year, 5% next year, because they don't really raise our rates too much. Basic materials, 7% um, increase. Finance, a little bit. Let's go down to aerospace. If we do happen to get into any type of uh, a war out there, which I hope we certainly don't, but if we do, typically aerospace tends to do quite well. We have consumer staples. Uh, retail is supposed to do really well this year. Inflation, obviously, has been driving things up quite a bit. Construction, business uh, services, look at this, business services, earnings are supposed to grow 16% this year and then 12% next year. And you say, well, what's business services? Let's, if you click on this, this symbol is the ETF for business services. You can actually see the past several months on what it's been doing. So you can actually go in and buy this entire ETF of companies that are business services. The symbol is IGV. Or you can go in and say, what are one of the best stocks? You can just choose any one of these stocks yourself. But most investors who don't want to actively pay attention and learn all about different stocks, ETFs are one of the absolute best ways to trade out there, especially if you're in mutual funds now. Because mutual funds were really designed years ago, decades ago, they were great, but it really made the brokerage from a lot of money. The new and improved hybrid version is an ETF where you don't have to pay the huge fees out there. You still get tremendous diversification by putting your money into this fund and buying a piece of every single investment inside this exchange traded fund. And the exchange traded fund can, it can be generic. It can be all the big stocks out there, it can be the small company stocks, it can be the Dow Jones stocks, the NASDAQ, or it can be maybe real estate. Maybe a look at real estate. Whoa. Maybe you say, hey, I don't, I want to invest in real estate, but you know, housing prices are too much right now. Well, maybe you start investing in something like this. 
Now, we teach how to trade and how to profit as it actually drops in value as well. This is a beautiful drop coming into, this is about, probably looks like February, that we hit a high in real estate. It went high, it was going high. And then, of course, it started dropping in value. When you see charts like this, you can invest your stock and just buy this when it's going up in value. Or when you start to see it come down in value, again, you can, make, you can profit as the stock drops in value as well. There's a lot to cover. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea on some of, the, some of these ETFs. Here's just the bar chart showing you, here's business services. This one looks actually okay. You could actually buy this. It's called the IGV, the Business Services ETF. If I click on it, it's gonna bring me to the specialized chart that has the arrows. And it shows for the past three months, this has been going up and it's been kind of sideways now. It looks like it's getting ready to probably roll over now and probably pull back down. So we wouldn't go into it now, um, just about because it's kind of just sideways at this point. But by going back to the scanner page, stock scanner page and scrolling down, you can see some of the top, where the top earnings are expected this year and next. This is a big deal because many companies out there are having tremendous, much, much, much lower earnings. Even Amazon and Microsoft and Apple, they're all the big companies out there are having lower earnings. It's not just the small companies out there. So if you want to really diversify your holdings out there and you don't want to just put money into one company with one risk, this is a great way to ex have a tremendous exposure to generally big companies out there in an overall large sector. Okay, I know I have to end pretty quick. This is only a 60-minute webinar, but um, let's see. So for instance, right now, retail would not be very good. Retail is actually heading down quite a bit, so we would avoid that one. Let's see what else is looking good. Medical has not been looking good ever since, gosh. Medical topped, looks like it topped out in December. It did fantastic up into December and then just started coming back down. So wouldn't be a good time to invest in that. Autos, trucks, and tires, those are very, very hot right now. The automobile industry is very, very big. Basic materials, industrial products. I'm just showing you all these different choices. Here's construction. It still looks really, really good overall. So a good place. So as we take a look at some of the ETFs we have out there, I am going to Okay. So don't forget um, when you're taking a look at all the ETFs out there there's a, there's so much. I can only just touch on a, a little bit in each section and I don't know if it was fluid enough for you tonight but we do have a, a two day class actually and it's fantastic. It goes over every single thing on the website. It shows you how to find a great stock how to find a great ETF, what's the best one right now, how to actually uh, purchase an ETF, and how to, once you own this ETF, how do you actually go in and start renting it out on a monthly or a weekly basis? It's called Selling Covered Calls. So we actually have a class coming up, and I'm not sure what's going to be the 21st and 22nd. It might be the following weekend, but we do have a class coming up. It's two days, and it's a Saturday and Sunday. And you can go to protectwealth.com to get your spots. The class for you and your significant other, you can bring a guest if you want. It's just for you and somebody else. It's awesome. You get access to our website for two months. The entire website where we show uh, stocks that we're in, we show great stocks, stocks that aren't so good. You can look at all your mutual funds out there, all your ETFs, and to see what you should be in or what you shouldn't be in. Folks, at this point, if you are in an investment, and it is below that blue line, the price is below, you probably shouldn't be in it if you're a conservative investor. You only want to find investments where the price is above that 30-day moving average, because then we know it's not dropping in value. And you want to learn how to play stop losses if you're a conservative investor. Do you need, do you need actively trade ETFs? Can I just do an annual rebalance? That's perfect. Absolutely. Sure. If you have an ETF, well, let me finish this real quick and I'll answer some of your questions, guys. It's good to see. Um, uh, let's see, I'll answer your questions here in just one second. Let me just finish this real quick. So we have a class that's coming up for two days and I know many of you have been on the class already and it's really, really wonderful. Uh, we're gonna show you all the different things, what's happening in the market right now. Well, what, do, what do we look for when investing in the market? And so we'll walk you through all of that. 
And you get access to the website for two full months for you and your significant other to use as much as you want. Look at your current investments to see if you should be in your current investments or see if you should maybe change to something, maybe into ETFs or maybe the inverse ETFs or maybe a sector of an ETF. And also um, the two the classes, two days, it's online. And again, I think it's the following weekend. I think we're going to have to change it based upon our, the Protect Wealth classes that are coming up as well. But this is a wonderful class if you want to go to it. Uh, protectwealth.com slash stocks. It's $197 for you and your significant other. If you don't have anybody, it's just $197 for you, but it's fantastic. And if you're using this, um, I know this also can be potentially a tax write-off because when you're looking to for research for your investments, a lot of times those potentially can be tax deductions for your $197. But it's going to help you decide whether you should be in your stock or whether you shouldn't be in the stock. Should you be in this investment, this ETF? Should you be in the Dow Jones or the NASDAQ or in medical or healthcare? The arrows are going to show you whether you should be in or whether you should be out. It makes it really simple to understand if you're really questioning on how am I not making money? Now, last year, again, we had a really, really tough year in the market, but there are some investments out there. If you are a conservative investor out there, uh, there's a, some great places to be. And again, cash is a good place to be as well. But diversifying among different ETFs is one of the better choices you have if you don't want to spend a lot of time looking at stocks and you want to stay away from mutual funds. Now, Robert and Gail said, we've lost 40000 with our financial advisor. We stayed with them because he told us the taxes would devastate us if you moved your money. Is there a tax-free way to move your money? Oh, is there a tax-free way to move your money? You know, you can always move your money over. As long as you don't sell anything, there's no taxes. So you can actually move your money from your advisor. If you're in mutual funds, you are going to have to sell those, though. Um, if, you, if he has you in mutual funds and they're going down in value, then, yeah, I probably would exit. Take your, take your, pay your taxes and go into something that can actually make you some money. But this is a very difficult market right now. Uh, hopefully, it should be changing at some point in the future. But because we've been in a bear market for you know, about, you know, almost a year and a half. So it should be changing pretty soon, but we just don't know when yet. Nobody knows when it's going to actually change. Um, so we have to see, but could you move your money over? You can certainly, it's like moving furniture from one house to the other house. You can certainly move your money over if you need to. Stacy, can I add something to that? Yes. Just set up a, a go to TD Ameritrade set up an IRA and and transfer the money from your existing over to the TD Ameritrade. But but it's still it, it it's a transfer of IRA to IRA. But they didn't, not, say, they didn't say if it was I, if it's an IRA, that's not a problem. If it's not an IRA, then there are going to be taxes involved. Yeah, is there a tax free way to move our money from the IRA to our account? And oh. and so just just IRA to IRA, and there the, that way there's no taxable taxable event that happens. Is all you have to do is set up a, a, another IRA. You can have as many IRAs as you want. Yeah, and yeah. just do a direct rollover into the. I didn't see the. I didn't have my glasses. I didn't see the IRA apart. Um, but yes, just it's just a direct rollover. Um, no charges, no fees to do any of that for sure. You can certainly do that. Um, for, yeah, the, web, the website's fantastic. There's so much more on here, guys. If you wanted to go to that class the, uh, for the two days, we'll show you how we, we're live on the website the entire two days. And we actually have you guys go find stocks and say, hey, let's look at a stock or let's look for the best ETF out there. Let's learn how to write covered calls. Let's learn how to take control of our investing and see what to do. Anything else you want to say, Don? By the way, is an amazing um, instructor. And, and as as are all the instructors there. I, I've attended the class multiple times and I, I, I love your website. Oh my gosh. It I was so genius in, in creating, you know, Mike in creating this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike did a fantastic job. So if you all have questions, you can certainly email me, Stacy at IncomeTrader.com. If you have any questions at all, otherwise, if you want to go to the class, fantastic. $197 for you and your significant other. And um, we, we will also be presenting at the Protect Wealth with Dawn next month as well. If you have any other questions, you can certainly contact us. Otherwise, let's see if there's any. Oh, put it in cash. What I mean by putting it in cash, um, just, it's a money market fund with your brokerage firm. Many of them have, uh, many of them pay much 
uh, up to 4%. Can we transfer a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA into a Meritrade? If you transfer a, a, a IRA into a Roth, you have to, it's called a conversion and you will pay taxes on that. So you can convert a small amount per year if you want, but uh, depending upon your age, that's something very valuable to do though, I would suggest to, to certainly look at that. But you probably don't wanna do it all at once because of tax ramifications. But again, if you have questions, Stacy at IncomeTrader.com. Don, you want me to go on? I, can, I don't mind going so, over. You know what? Thank you for mentioning that because a lot of people think to, to transfer money from a traditional to a Roth, oh my gosh, it's an all or nothing deal. And, it, and it's not. It, you know what? I, I made a little extra money this year. I, my income is down and I can absorb a $10,000 hit and pay the taxes on that, move that. But I would also not encourage you to do that if the money is kind of stagnant. I would, but on something that's, you know what, I'm learning a new strategy. This is going to grow. Convert that to the Roth. But if you've got money that's not moving very fast, I, I don't know that I would do the, the Roth conversion. Would I, I would. I would. I would, I would, would? Convert to, I would convert to a Roth only because when you convert to a Roth, you know, you have complete control where you want your money to go. If the markets are going down, put it into the inverse ETF and watch it go up. Mm -hmm. If the markets are going up and you're not sure where to go, put it a little bit into each of the different ETFs. I mean, maybe you, you could, gosh, you could go into so many different choices, but when it's in your Roth, all your gains for the rest of your life are going to be tax-free forever, but you have complete control. You decide where it's going to go. So you can grow it tremendously. As Don pointed out, if it's not doing anything, I would move it, first of all, to something that is doing something, whether and, it's- And um, learn a new strategy to make it yeah. do something. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Stacey, thank you for being on. You, I, I, think, I think we've got through most of the questions here, haven't we? When you said put it in cash, you simply mean- uh, Money market in your brokerage firm, yes. So if, you have, if your investments are dropping in value and- if your investments are dropping in value and you're like, what's going on? I don't know what to do. You don't have to stay in them. Move the cash into a money market and let the market drop and, and just take a breather. It's okay to sit in cash. In fact, most money managers, hedge funds have lost record number of hundreds of millions and millions of dollars this past year because they've lost so much money in the market. And they're actually putting a ton of money just sitting in cash at about 4% in the money markets. Um, I use interactive broker and they're, you know, they they pay 4% on just money, 4.33% on money markets. And so you'll find places out there, but cash is a really good place to be, especially if your money's dropping. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a good idea to stay in it. If it's dropping, just sit out, sit in cash for a little bit, get your 4%, let it drop. And then once it stops and then starts to go back up, then you might want to move back into it. And here in a couple of weeks, we'll be te teaching another summit where Mike traditionally, in fact, every time he, he goes, are we at the bottom of the market yet? Here are the things you need to look at to make sure. So if you if you haven't attended his 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 workshop during the, the three day summit, I encourage you to do that because um, every six weeks we're having a summit and he's giving you a, 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 a great market I, I overview. Know. A really, it's a great yeah, market it overview. Really, of it really is. Yeah, of what's yeah, happening out there. Yeah, it's fantastic. A state of the state for the for the market. It really is. Mm -hmm. Stacy, awesome. And and students, if you haven't attended this class, or if you have, and you just want to come back for a refresher course, um, it, it's always changing. And I, I, we can't make it easier for you than $197 for a two-day workshop. And you can bring a friend. And if you can't do that, those dates, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. There'll, there'll be another one coming up. Stacy. you're awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Any, Mark, any closing you. remarks? Any closing remarks? Oh, my goodness. The market's dangerous right now. Be really careful. It's, <laughs> it's, trend, it's, it's, very, it's a very tough situation. So if you're not sure where to invest, Keep your money in a safe spot, maybe in a money market until we can figure out until we kind of get to the um, bottom of this and listen to our classes every month that we're, we're six weeks with Dawn to see if we get to the bottom and then time to step back into it. But um, you know what? If you want to sit into a, a cash account for a little while, it's a great place to be. Perfect. 
Stacy could not thank you enough. Mm -hmm. um, students, thank you for being on. Hope this has been helpful. And we'll see, we've got some great webinars coming up next week and the week after that. And then I think we're getting pretty close to the summit and tax day. And so uh, we wish you very, very well. Stacy. you're amazing. Thank you for being here. Thanks, guys. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Good to see you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.